So this is Josephina. She will uh, give her introduction later on. And I'm Kai. I'm uh, CTO of Circunet and CEO of Circustack. And we want to give you a brief view what we did with confidential computing uh, to harden the OpenStack control plane. Um, and my part will be to give you a short intro on what confidential computing is. And Josephina will give you the details how we did it. And uh, this may be the more interesting thing. So I have not much time. What is confidential computing about? It's about security. OK, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Do you give me some time, Josephina, to explain more? <laughs> OK, thank you. Uh, a little bit more concrete. Uh, it's about CIA. Mm, what's that? <laughs> uh, sounds interesting, at least. Uh, but CIA is a uh, common abbreviation in the security area for uh, security goals that we want to reach with uh, mechanisms that we implement. It's confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity. And uh, this is especially interesting in the context of cloud computing, when you have these uh, 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 models of uh, providers and uh, different stakeholders on the stack of, uh, of the, of, on the software stack. Uh, so it provides uh, mechanisms and means to uh, to secure data, uh, to provide integrity of data, and authenticity of data. Uh, and so it, uh, it's a mechanism to provide trustworthiness. And you might have, have heard uh, about confidential computing in the context of work workload protection. Uh, this is a common use case where it's used for uh, to protect workload against uh, providers. But we wanted to look at how we can use that for the control plane. Uh, to be a little bit more concrete, what does it mean uh, to protect data in these three dimensions? Uh, and especially also code, not only data. And this is a, a, a nice distinction, uh, a, a new paradigm, let's say it this way, because uh, that's something we didn't have in the past. We had in the past data address protection, and we still have it, of course. So we can protect data when it's stored on uh, on disk, uh, on storage, wherever. Uh, there are means of encryption and integrity protection so that data is stored securely. We can also protect data on flight, so when it's uh, transmitted over, uh, over the internet uh, in different ways. So we have VPN technology since, since 30 years. We have new uh, versions of VPNs like WireGuard. Uh, so uh, the same thing in different uh, ways to uh, encrypt data when it's uh, sent and decrypt data when it's received. Also not very, not very easy to make it right, okay, but uh, technically uh, it's, it's known how to make it. But the new thing with confidential computing is uh, to protect data and use. Uh, this sounds like magic. Uh, how to protect data, how to encrypt data, or use encrypted data when it's used, when we compute on this data. So we have two general solutions to make that happen. Uh, a, a mathematical solution for that is fully homomorphic encryption, uh, which is a very interesting mathematical principle, uh, sophisticated stuff. Uh, it's currently of quite limited use because it's uh, really hard to compute or hard to use uh, for general purposes. So we have some specific use cases. Uh, we can somehow search in databases. Uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting use cases coming up with homomorphic encryption, uh, but it's not ready for prime time yet, I think. Uh, so it's especially not use suitable for program code. Uh, you can calculate the data, but you cannot protect program code with homomorphic encryption. Therefore, um, hardware-supported means are developed in the past, and especially now in the context of cloud computing, which are, um, well, differently uh, suited for, uh, for the OpenStack control plane especially, but uh, uh, so the technology behind is almost the same in different uh, implementations. It started very early with the uh, trusted platform module, we might, uh, the TPM, 
stuff that was developed also some 15, 20 years ago. And uh, you have technologies, mechanisms, software stacks that uh, support uh, trusted computing. It's called trusted computing architecture these days. Uh, so it's specially used to protect uh, the software stack uh, against tampering with. So it's integrity protection mechanism. But it was very hard to manage. So it, it doesn't have a quite uh, good distribution or, or usage in the broad yet. And it, it's, uh, from what I see, it, TPMs and TC, TCG, TCA mechanisms are not used that much anymore because it's now evolved in the secure enclave paradigm. Uh, so in step in between, uh, there was a mechanism in the ARM processors especially called Trust Zone uh, that was implemented as a kind of CPU integrated second part, uh, secure part of processing. So it also uh, it was already used for processing data in a secure way. Uh, but it was also very limited in its, uh, in its use. So uh, the new implementations uh, of secure enclaves uh, are there in Intel and AMD processors. Intel call it, call us, calls it SGX, ARM, uh, AMD calls it SZEV, S-E-V. And for ARM, it's coming soon, from what I heard. So it's not officially there. And there is a uh, consortium that is dealing with a... Uh, standardized software stack and APIs for that. It's the Confidential Computing Consortium. And there are a lot of information how it works, how it works on different processors and so on. I brought a slide from Intel here uh, that, that, it, that shows a little bit how it works uh, to make it more visible or uh, uh, tangible uh, what it's really about. So, uh, you can protect data in an application or in a process context with SGX or with this as secure enclave uh, in a way that data is encrypted when it's transferred over the bus and in the memory, in the RAM, uh, but it's only en uh, decrypted uh, in the CPU. So the CPU itself provides the secure boundary, security boundary to protect the data and the, uh, the program code. And there is especially a mechanism that goes, goes beyond what we have until now. It's uh, attestation. Uh, we can implement mechanisms to verify, to validate that the code that runs in this enclave is, a speci is exactly a, a piece of code that we have uh, that we have compiled before. So it's uh, it's uh, made by hash sums. Uh, so, we, so the infrastructure behind uh, verifies the hash sums and only. If this code uh, is um, calculated to this hash sum, then uh, the CPU is uh, executing it. So that's a very nice um, behavior or mechanism uh, to provide integrity, code integrity. And even more, the code and the data, when it's, it goes outside the CPU, is encrypted. So uh, other processes on the system can't look into memory can dump the memory and look what uh, secrets are or what data is in the memory, and mostly program code deals with secrets. And that's where we come uh, to the idea that we could use confidential computing also to protect the OpenStack control plane, because there's uh, a lot of stuff inside the control plane. You know it much better than me, um, especially when it goes about uh, key management and key um, yeah, key storage, uh, like Barbican, uh, like Keystone, uh, then uh, it's not so good to have these secrets in the main memory in the RAM of this, uh, of this machine, because then it's attackable. If someone gets root, if someone gets physical access, then it can read out the memory, and there is even more attacks, like cold boot attacks, when you can read out the memory when the machine is switched off, even. Um, <clears throat> and get the secrets that are stored in the uh, DRAM. So uh, we think it's very uh, good uh, to have a mechanism to protect data of the control plane uh, in these uh, sort of enclaves. And it's even more a protection against uh, the major attack vector in the, uh, in the cloud scenario, the VM breakout when someone um, is able to uh, get 
access to the compute node when he breaks out to the, uh, from the VM. And so he has root or even ring zero access and writes, and he can do everything on a machine. And he can read out the memory and whatever he wants to do. And so it, this enclave mechanism is very interesting to protect the control plane, even if the VM or the operating system on the compute node um, is not that secure that we want it to be at this. So uh, that was the motivation behind, and I think uh, it can really help to harden the control plane against this major attack vector on a cloud stack. And finally, it's about CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity uh, of program code and data on the control plane. What we did is uh, we started to containerize OpenStack services. This is nothing really new. Maybe you already did that or other did do that. Uh, but we then started to uh, use SGX to protect Barbican. Uh, this was a joint effort with Intel and Scontain. Uh, Intel, as you probably know, Scontain is a small company in the uh, Tristan area that has a lot of experience with SGX and um, libraries around that. What we experienced is we failed often uh, on the t current technical limitations of this uh, of this enclave paradigm. And Josephine will give some insights in this, uh, in this uh, pain that we had <laughs> at some point. Uh, but uh, I think it's worth to go this way. And uh, because this technology emerges, we will have more resources in these enclaves. We will have uh, encrypted virtual machine en uh, environments in the next generations of the process. So this technology will be there in the future. And we would like you to build these OpenStack services more enclave-friendly so that we can use this uh, hardening mechanism uh, to, to make it more secure to run an OpenStack control plane. So that was my intro. And uh, now Josefina will give you some more insights what we really did. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Josefina Seifert. I'm a developer at ZekoStack. Some of you might know me as being one of, um, also a contributor to OpenStack. And normally I'm more directly um, into the OpenStack code. And now I will give you some overview about our case study um, with Barbican, um, which is on the control plane. So um, we started with a very, very simple Barbican setup. We had our controller node with our Barbican container, a config file, and we have also our lifecycle management, which we wanted to include. And we wanted to use the image updates or the lifecycle management for any outdated images. And while we still had some pain with um, putting Barbican in an SGX container, that was um, only one part. Our main pain with um, putting Barbican in an SGX container or any other um, OpenStack servers, like we also did it with Keystone, and we are currently working on uh, Nova and putting that into an SGX container is um, the forking of the processes, which yeah, leads to a lot of processes which should maybe be executed in an enclave, but um, that's way too much. So. After we um, got that worked out for Barbican, um, we had two other um, open questions here. The first was, yeah, um, what do we do with a config file? I mean, um, where does the data in the config file come from? And how can we protect it but make it usable for rebuilds, etc.? And we especially used simple crypto as a use case here because um, the hardest thing when simple crypto is there's the key encryption key, the master key encryption key, directly in the config, and that is um, a wonderful attack vector. <laughs> and so if we can protect that CAC, then we can protect other credentials like database credentials in the config file. So this is the first question I want to talk about. And the second is, yeah, we, we still have a lifecycle management. And maybe we want to update the Barbican image because there's a security issue. How do we prevent 
the rollout of outdated or unpatched images and yeah, scan this. And therefore, we used Scone from Scontain. Um, I'll just give you a short overview about the architecture. Scone consists of local attestation services and con a configuration and attestation service, which is more central. Um, on every node which uh, executes a secure enclave, there has to be an um, LAS. And the CAS can be central, or there can be more than one CAS and stored on central nodes. The local attestation service is just for measuring and attesting the local enclaves, as you can see on the left side. It provides a secure hash of the initial enclave state. So just make sure this is everything OK with the enclave on this. The CAS is a little bit more complex. There we can store policies for each service, which is executed, like Barbican. And we can provide configuration, like environment variables, even injected files and keys. And that is um, something we can use for the config files. And it also can attest each service instance. So first, we took our original Barbican image without uh, being SGX ready. And we also used Gone to build an um, SGX ba uh, based yeah, Barbican image. And we did so well with also providing a Scone file which described the target image, what it should be, what it should go on the, to the enclave, and also to describe confidential properties of Barbican. And those confidential properties ended up in the policy which was built for the Barbican service in the CAS. And that policy also includes an initial checksum of the image for the image attestation. Now, <clears throat> as we can give um, parameters rightly into the policy, we go back to our config flyer and separate the config values between open config values, those which can be stored on the every node and can be accessed by everyone, can be adjustable by LCM, and it's like the IP of the container. It's not uh, confidential. And then we have um, secure variables, and therefore we have placeholder variables. Here you can see we replaced the CAC with the placeholder variable, and this is immutable for our lifecycle management and for operators. <clears throat> then there are two ways to get the CAC into the policy there. It is either, either yeah, provided with the SCON file, so in a creation, or what a better way is, you can give um, SCON the comment to generate a key. So the key generated is in the CAS. And as you can see, the CAS and LAS also have a little lock on it. So they are also executed in an SGX environment. So if we generate a key into the CAS, as it's stored in an enclave there, no one can access it. And when we bring it to a container, when we start it, when we initialize it, um, the generated key is transferred directly into the enclave of the uh, container. And here we can say the first step when, uh, when we have a container initialization is, of course, to build the container. We use our new image and the policy, which is stored in the CAS, where we get the generated key from, and also the hash of the image for the attestation. Um, the config file from the controller node is also read in that part, and everything is placed together to have an um, SGX container. Before activating that, the second step is to measure and locally attest the container that is done by the LAS. And there are even more secure key management than just providing the CAC for the config file, but you can also generate 
keys um, for, example, an encrypted file system. So these, these keys are also transferred um, at the initializing of the container, and the Barbican container or any other container, maybe more case for Nova, can have access to an encrypted file system using that key. And every key which is co coming from um, the CAS is reloaded at the time for restarts and rebuilds and never um, saved anywhere else than in the enclave of the SGX controller on the controller node. So, um, For the attestation part, um, we can go into this little example. We had a Barbican image also um, in version one, which worked very well, but then um, there was a security issue. We needed to fix that image, and there was a critical security update, and now there's image v2. And because we did that with Scone again, there's an automatic update for the image hash in the policy. As you can see, the hash is not of the image <laughs> v1, but of the image v2. What now happens if we want to start um, a new container with the old image? Then um, it takes everything, begins to build it, but the second step, the measurement, um, fails because um, it creates a difference between these um, hashes and other measurements, and therefore it is not executed completely, so it stopped. If we use the image v2, um, we have the same building process first using the policy and the image, and then the measurement, because we have the correct image hash, says, yeah, you can go. To summarize all of this, <clears throat> um, the main thing we have now is the, poli uh, the policy in the CAS, which is um, in another SGX enclave. So there we can have a key for a potential file system or any, opera, any config variable which is used in the Barbican container or any other container. So we <coughs> have that one issue addressed with, where we want to address um, where does the values of the config comes from and how can we um, use the same value for any rebuilds or um, any other rollouts because a redundancy you can use as you see, the same policy for um, a redundant Barbican installation. And it is verified through the hash, so you, can al so you always run the correct version. And there are also some other um, yeah, <laughs> little gimmicks to Scone, because um, it even checks your local hardware and looks for the right code for SGX, for example, and if there's um, a security breach, it does not execute any container, but it waits for an update, so you have to update first the <coughs> version of your SGX before you can execute another um, secure container on it. And that was a lot of um, yeah theory, so now for the demo time. Yeah. At first, I want to show you, um, you know, uh, our key encryption key protection, and therefore we don't even stay on the controller node, but we go directly into our um, SGX-based container and grab for that config in that container. So anything you can um, do as an operator. And here we can see um, we grabbed for the simple crypto plugin, and we see um, the CAC is just the variable. The original CAC is stored in an enclave and not accessible from this, even from this container out. Now, I can show you that it's still 
working so that we provided a CAG. We are going out of that um, container again and just executing an OpenStack command, getting a secret and decrypting it. And it works. I can get payload and I have protected my key. Um, so that's the first part of this. Now I can show you, actually, it's not easy to show you where this key is generated in the CAS because you need special um, operational yeah, keys to access this. Um, I'm not allowed to do it. But I can show you the um, scone file in which you can create it and which you can also can give the key. And this is something which looks like this. There we can see the CAC, and you can either specify the key as a value or um, tell the CAS to generate the key at that point. And so we protected that one value from the config. Now I've showed you the config, and the next part is the attestation. At first, we still have our Barbican SGX-based container, and we just make a backup image of it, of the running container. This is a new image. Backup done. And now we stop the container, and we inspect the container and grab the scone config ID because we need this ID when we start the container again, which is done now. There you can see the ID. And we specify not the old ID, but the backup image. So it's a different image. And now we look into the logs. What did um, happen? As you can see, <laughs> <coughs> suspected replay attack. And a few lines above, you can even read uh, that attestation failed. So even if it's because it's just a backup image, but it doesn't let me start it. So I cannot even start that image because the measurement is different, the hash is different. Um, I cannot just inject another image from a love circuit. That is the second important thing. Okay. That was everything from my side. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Please. Uh, you should go to the mic because there is a stream. A uh, question for Josephine. Uh, I think you mentioned uh, at one point that uh, forks were problematic yeah. um, with the with the SGX. So, bearing in mind developing enclave-friendly applications, what's the what's the problem with forks? Um, and uh, yeah, are there limits on forks? Uh, and what can we do to work around that? Um. The problem was, when I'm informed correctly, that um, because there were, were so many um, forks later on from the standardized, uh, from the start point, which you wanted to put in the enclave, that it was problematic. It was too much for that enclave. And we had to use, um, or we had to adjust a few things to parallelize this. And yeah, that was a big thing which <coughs> did cost us time, but... There is currently a memory limit uh, yeah. in this enclave, and if you swap out, uh, then it becomes too much too slow. Yeah. Uh, so in the uh, hardware uh, vendors are constantly increasing this, but uh, it's still, with a new generation with Ice Lake, uh, uh, it's still limited in some sense, so uh, it's not unlimited as you work in a <coughs> outside the enclave. And so it does need some care uh, how many uh, forks you do, how many cache you use, or whatever. So um, 
but that's something I think we should well summarize in some sort of uh, do's and don'ts yeah. <laughs> um, and and put it on a website or whatever to, to help to develop end life friendly services. <clears throat> Please. Can you go also to the mic or? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you looked at any other services, um, especially those that use uh, root wrap or any privilege escalation to run at root level uh, to set up, well, uh, Neutron set up networking things and uh, what the, the limits of your approach are to just protect the software but also <coughs> make sure it only does things that it's supposed to do? We are currently um, actually going into Nova and trying to put Nova into such containers. And um, yeah, this is currently something we are working on. So um, as far we had Barbican and Keystone and they are done. That's working that on this the way. easy part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're mo the most lightweight ones. So you wanted to test the, t the two questions here and that was it. I can be quite loud. Uh, I can comment on this. So, um, <clears throat> side channel attacks are a big problem, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> period. And you won't get rid of it completely uh, in a shared environment. So, uh, I think we are working now on more sophisticated attacks. Uh, this, when we look back at Spectrum Meltdown, this was really a disaster, but now it's, uh, it's getting better. But it's also getting slower, <laughs> you know. So uh, you also you always have this trade-off, and uh, I think it's not not a black-white solution. Um, you can separate workloads if you want to get rid of side channels on different machines. Uh, this is easily done with the automation mechanisms in OpenStack, but uh, <clears throat> well, it's overhead, of course. Um, we also use uh, these uh, mitigations of Intel, and uh, we work. By the way, we work quite closely together with a company that discovered Meltdown and that has a very close or very detailed knowledge about virt uh, virtualization and uh, side channel attack protection. So we also look at how we could improve the hypervisor to protect better against uh, side channel attacks. But that's a long story. Uh, so the contain um, tool set is not for free, uh, so please address them that they open source it. <laughs> uh, we would like that, but uh, it's their business model, by the way. Um, but um, it's, it's only a way to easily use SGX. You can do it step by step. There is a, a ton of soft documentation how to use SGX and do it yourself. Um, they're also open source in the field to use SGX, but uh, that's the enablement of SGX, different ways to use it. Um, the way we uh, combined it together is more a kind of configuration, so that's not a, well, an implementation work, but a configuration and deployment work uh, that we did with, uh, together with our lifecycle management, uh, that's Cloud and Heat. Uh, and we integrated, I think, with Yahook already. Yeah. So that uh, new lifecycle management based on Kubernetes um, is able to deal with that sort because it's containerized in that, this way and that way. So uh, we had, it comes together at some point. But uh, if you want to uh, test yourself, just connect to us and ask how we can help you. OK, I think. That's the time is up. Yeah, the time is up. <laughs> Thank Sorry. you very much.